Okay guys, transition metals. People seem to really appreciate the transition metal videos I've done so far, so I thought I'd do some more, okay? Now, this is an AQA A-level chemistry past paper question again, as always. However, this actually involves some synoptic knowledge of electropotentials, okay? So it's a bit of a tricky question. So what I'm gonna do is just read through it and break it down together. As always, pause the video, do your best to attempt it yourself, see where you go wrong and learn from your mistakes, okay? So let's jump into this. So this question is about vanadium compounds, okay? Use data from table four, so this electropotential data right here, to identify the species that can be used to reduce this vanadium ion down to this vanadium ion in aqueous solution and no further, okay? This point is really important, the no further part, okay? Now, for this question, we have to remember the NOPR rule, okay? Or the no problem rule that some of you may know it as. Now, this essentially tells us what will be able to reduce something, what will be able to oxidize something based on our electropotential data here, okay? More negative half cell will always be oxidized, the more positive half cell will be reduced, okay? So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna locate which of these equations is our vanadium O2 plus ion, okay? So which one of these is that? That's right here, okay, which is our 1.00 volts, okay? So what we're going to have to do is we're gonna to have to find something that is more negative than that, so that will reduce it, so essentially when we're comparing these two, this has to be more positive to allow this reaction to be reduced, okay? Within electropotentials, if you didn't know this, obviously as we can see on this side of the reaction, there's always plus electrons here. And this tells us that the forward direction is always reduction, okay? Just keep that in mind. So in this case then, we have to, we have to pick a substance which will reduce this so that is more negative okay, but that will not move it past VO2 plus. So what we have to do then is locate this one, the VO2 plus, which has a 0 0.34 potential, okay? Now, although these two right here, this 0 0.77 Fe3 plus and the minus 0 0.76 um, volts are below our one voltage, we would not actually be allowed to pick this guy right here, okay? Now, some of you may have picked zinc just because you you follow this rule and you're like, ah, zinc, easy peasy, done, okay? This is not the case, okay? Because what's gonna happen is, it's gonna tick off this box right here. It's gonna reduce the VO2 plus to v VO2 plus, okay? But once we get to this stage, okay, it's also going to reduce it down to vanadium three plus, which is not what we want. We don't want it to have the reducing power to be able to do that. Hopefully that made sense from this question right here. No further, really take a note of this, okay? So what is our reagent gonna be then? It's obviously going to be something here, okay? Something within this reaction scheme, okay? Now, like I said, this direction is always reduction. Okay, but if this is being reduced, how is that possibly going to reduce this? If something is reducing something else, it has to be a reducing agent and it itself gets oxidized in the process. Therefore, what we're gonna do is we're gonna flip this equation, boop, going the other way, okay? So this Fe2 plus is ultimately going to become our reducing agent for this whole process that they want us to fulfill here. So I'm just gonna chuck that right in the box here, Fe2 plus. Okay, now, how do we explain this? Okay, so I'm going to explain it solely based on the NOPR rule, and it's super easy, guys. If you can remember the way to explain things in electropotentials based on this, it's gonna save you a lot of time, a lot of waffle, and all that stuff that you want to avoid, okay? So what we're going to say here is that the electropotential of this vanadium O2 plus electrode with the VO2 plus electrode is greater than, so it's more positive than, therefore it's getting reduced, than this guy right here, okay, the 0 0.77. So that's gonna be electro potential of the Fe3 plus, Fe2 plus, all right? Which is greater than the electro potential of this guy right here, the 0 0.34, okay? Which is what we wanted to stop it at. Because vanadium can be continually reduced over and over again, which in this case, zinc would have been able to accomplish if I actually should label that zinc right there. Um, so that's what I'm gonna fill in here, VO2 plus V3 plus, okay? 
easy as that guys okay just make sure you follow this in our own pr rule and just look at the values okay is that more positive is it more negative what's going on here and it has to be able to reduce or oxidize oxidation switch the arrow to go in this direction okay hopefully that's helpful for you guys all right next up 9.2 then oxidation state of this guy right here so what's going to happen here is water we can essentially completely ignore that all right water is always neutral so all we're concerned is with our v and our o okay now o is going to be two minus always two minus based on it being in group six okay but we've got an overall two plus charge here okay so that means that we have to sort of bridge the gap here and make it two plus okay so what do we have to do to two minus to get it to two plus hopefully this is very straightforward here all we have to do is plus four okay now, if you're not too sure on oxidation states, just brush up on your year one reduction um, topic and you should be all good to go. Okay, 9.3 then. So we've got this complex right here and it exists as two isomers. One isomer is shown and we have to draw the structure of the other isomer and state the type of isomerism. Okay, so if you watch my other video on the isomers that exist, you should have known that it can't be optical here, okay? We can get optical isomerism with octahedral complexes, but they have to be bidentate, okay? Now, these are all monodentate, so it has to be cis-trans isomerism, okay? And that's exactly what I'm just gonna draw in right here. So we're gonna have our V in the middle, we're gonna have our bonds going off, Then we're gonna have our molecules, okay? So OH2, OH2, H2O, Cl, Cl. Now you might be thinking, why the hell is he just drawing the same thing again? It's only because it allows me to explain what's going on here, okay? So this isomer right here, these are on the same side of the molecule, okay? So this is gonna be a cis isomer right here. Now what we have to do is within this topic, okay, the way I like to teach it is that when things are cis isomers, the different groups have to be 90 degrees apart, okay? So 90 degrees apart would be from this planar um, bond here to this distant bond here, or it can also be like this, okay? Like that, okay? So that's also 90 degrees. Wrap your head around it. 3D orientation is a bit weird, but hopefully that makes sense. And this right here to this is 180, okay? So what we want to do with trans isomerism, which is ultimately the one we want to demonstrate here, is we want to make it go across the molecule. Um, so I'm gonna rub this out quickly to make it a bit neater. But what we want to do is essentially, we can either switch one of these guys for this to make this across the molecule, or we can take this away and switch it so it's across the molecule this way. Hopefully that makes sense, not too complicated. Um, so let me, I'm going to switch these two actually, just to make it nice. Uh, let's go here, CLH2O, whoops, OH2. Easy as that. Okay, and our isomerism is obviously going to be cis-trans. Okay, one last thing that I sort of missed here, which may not be evident straight away because it's already in a box and it just confuses your brain, but it needs an extra box. <laughs> it needs extra square brackets, okay? And then outside the square brackets, we want to keep the charge the same. Nothing's happened to the charge, so that's still a plus on that, okay? Two marks in the bag right there. So let's go on to question 9.4 then. Heating this guy right here produces vanadium 5 oxide, water, and one other product. So we just have to give an equation here, not too complicated, okay? So NH4VO3, there's no electrons, no protons, or nothing like that. This is gonna go straight to here. This is gonna equal our vanadium 5 oxide. Hopefully you've revised your vanadium oxides topic. You should know that when it's a plus five oxidation state, it exists like this, okay? Now we're gonna add H2O right here. The one other product, hopefully this is pretty simple to you guys, but you should see this ammonium right here and you should think ammonia straight away, okay? So that's gonna be our reaction right there. Easy one mark. Um, maybe I'm missing something here actually because we've got two V's over here. So I'm gonna actually double that up, which means you have to double that up. Are our waters balanced? Four, four, two, four, six. Okay, everything's balanced. Good to go. All right, this last question here catalysis. Okay, now. Vanadium 5 oxide is the catalyst used in the manufacturing of sulfur trioxide. Give two equations to show how the catalyst is used and regenerated, okay? Now, I'm going to say this here. Some of you may be able to guess this. Flashcards, all right? <laughs> Flashcards! Screaming from the rooftops, okay? Within the transition metal and reactions of aqueous ions topic, all those, all those 
memorization topics where there's a ton of equations, color changes, observations. Flashcards are your best friend. So they never really ask anything other than this, okay? It's gonna be this same equation every time. So I'm gonna start with, um, I just memorized this off the top of my head um, based on exposure to this sort of topic over and over again. But it reacts with sulfur dioxide and we get given off our V2O4 plus uh, sulfur trioxide. And then, so basically within this catalyst equations, okay, you always want to show it as a react reactant in the first step, okay? And then in the second step, you want to show it being regenerated. And that's essentially what a catalyst does. It increases um, the rate of reaction by creating an alternative pathway with a lower activation energy and doesn't get used up in the process. It will always get regenerated. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take our V2O4 right here, this is going to react with half a mole of diatomic oxygen to restore our V2, I should say restore this guy right here, V2O5. Okay, simple as that, not complicated. If you just memorize the equations, you should be completely fine. Okay guys, real quick, as always, examiner's report and mark scheme. So I'm not gonna go over this mark scheme too much. Um, hopefully you can pause the video, just check it out for yourself. Now, examiner's report is where I'm going to focus, okay? So 9.1 then, only 11.3% of students scored both marks here. Sometimes iron two plus was chosen, but students could not explain their choice. The most common incorrect answer was zinc, okay? Not surprising guys, zinc is the common, common reducing agent when it comes onto the vanadiums, okay? Now, you just have to really pay attention to this word here where they said no further. That's the key discriminator on whether you'd get these marks correct or not, I assume, based on the NOPR rule. Okay, just really do your best to read the question carefully. Quite a tricky one, um, based on how many students got it right. Okay, next point then, 9.2. Just over three quarters of students could give the oxidation state. Easy year one, not too much, uh, not too much to go over there. 9.3 then. The structure was often given incorrectly as a mirror image and the type of isomerism as optical. Only 37.2% of students scored both marks. Okay, so just do your best to remember that optical isomers only form with octahedral complexes that have bidentate ligands, three bidentate ligands attached, okay? The ones you need to know, ethane dioate and ethane one two diamine. Get those burned into your brain and you'll be good to go. Okay, 9.4 then. This was poorly answered with only just over a third of students giving the correct equation. Um, now, it's only a one marker question. I wouldn't even worry about this. If, you, if, you, if you're stuck on this and you're like, oh, I don't know what to balance. I don't know what's going on. What's the other product? Just skip it. Honestly, just skip it. So one marker is not the end of the world. You can always come back to it and give it, a, give it a go at the end of the paper if you've got some spare time, okay? We knew that one of them had to be water. We knew one of them was the vanadium five oxidation state compound. So as long as you remember what this was right here, as long as you remember this is the form of the five oxidation, plus five oxidation state vanadium compound, you should have been able to get this guy right here, the ammonia based on this ammonium right here. Um, but if not, not the end of the world, as I said. Next point here, 9.5. Over half of the students gave the correct equations. Incorrect equations included charged vanadium species. Surprisingly, 12% of students were unable to make any attempt. Okay, so I assume they just got to the end of the paper, question nine, right near the end, and they were just like, you know what, I don't remember it, I'm just gonna come back to it, and they possibly forgot. Again, one marker, not the end of the world here, okay? But like I said, flashcards are your friend for this, so do your best just to memorize all the equations, all of the color changes, all that good stuff. Hopefully this was helpful. If it was, drop me a like. Subscribe for future science and maths content. Really helps the channel grow. Best of luck, guys, in your exams. Peace.